there have been a lot of characters within the Sonic universe that have been sabotaged, retconned, rewritten, or just ignored. Among this long convoluted list of characters within the Sonic franchise, the one that immediately comes to mind is the Princess of the Soul Dimension and Guardian of the Soul Emeralds, Blaze the Cat. Blaze the Cat debuted in the 2005 Nintendo DS game Sonic Rush, where she embarks on a mission to find and retrieve the solid emeralds that are scattered throughout Sonic's dimension. After befriending Cream the Rabbit and learning how to rely on others, she teams up with Sonic to defeat Eggman and his alternate dimension counterpart, Eggman Nega. N -E -G -A. Blaze returns to her own dimension, knowing she'll see Sonic again, and surprisingly enough, she sees Sonic again in her dimension. Turns out that Sonic and Tails followed an energy reading that led them to Blaze's dimension and eventually discovered that both the Chaos Diamonds and the Salt Emeralds were once again attracted to one another, though this time they were more stable. After the events of Sonic Rush Adventure, Blaze just took a back seat, and in the worst way possible. In Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, she was retconned into being Wedgie the Hedgie's companion in a post apocalyptic future where they battle against the Islamic version of the devil named Iblis. Both Wedgie and Blaze travel to the past, or the present in this case, to find and kill the person responsible for the apocalypse, the Iblis Trigger. Blaze in this story doesn't really do much. All she does is provide support whenever the plot demands it. She hardly has any input on anything, nor does she question Mephistopheles about why or how the Iblis Trigger is Sonic. I mean, when she hears that a blue hedgehog is the Iblis Trigger, that raises a few eyebrows. Surely this couldn't be the same blue hedgehog that I befriended and fought beside with to save our worlds. Actually, I'm getting ahead too quickly here. Indeed, Blaze the Cat is a princess from another dimension, but when asked about why Blaze was retconned to be in the future, Takashi Yuzuka said basically what happened is that everyone had like amnesia. That doesn't make any sense! Now, in Sonic 06's defense, playing as Blaze isn't the worst experience in the world, but for everything else, it is. The only useful act she does is seal away Iblis due to her soul being lit with flames. She's a pyrokinetic, so of course. At this moment, she tells Wedgie here, fuck this character by the way, to use Chaos Control to send her to a different dimension. People speculated that Sonic Ocean was a prequel to Sonic Rush because this moment right here sets up how she was in the Soul Dimension to begin with. But after defeating the Sun God, time resets so none of the events in Sonic 06 ever happened. No, it does not make sense that Crisis City is in Generations because this timeline has been effectively wiped. After the Sonic Rush duology and her botched appearance in Sonic 06, Blaze just makes minor appearances in later games. Sonic meets her in Eggman's killer theme park in Space and Colors, she attends Sonic's birthday party somehow in Generations, she's also playable in Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, and God help her, she's playable in the multiplayer modes of the storybook series. Not counting her medieval counterpart in Black Knight. After learning how to gain trust and make friends in Rush and putting with Marine shenanigans in Rush Adventure, Blaze hasn't had any major roles in the series, nor has she had her own series. So, despite exploring her world in Rush Adventure, we never see more of it. I view Rush Adventure as an opportunity for Blaze to have her own series where her character and her world can be explored and developed further. If Blaze and Marine are the polar opposite of Sonic and Tails, then just imagine who would be the polar opposite of Knuckles, or Amy. And then there's a Jewel Scepter. This relic has been protected by Blaze's family for generations and is constantly sought by pirates or a Power hungry fools. The Scepter has its own version of Chaos Control called the Power of the Stars. If Chaos Control can manipulate time and space, then the Power of the Stars can maintain the existences of parallel dimensions. This power was founded by an ancient civilization that learned how to harness this power, but the knowledge of this power faded over time. That is, until Eggman and Eggman Nega sought the Jewel Scepter to create their respective empires. Sonic and Blaze defeated both Eggman and Blaze ensured the protection of the Scepter, but after that, nothing. I didn't think highly of it at the time, but reflecting on it now, Blaze really got fucked over, didn't she? I mean, the pieces were there. There were islands to explore, a civilization to learn about, maybe we can learn how Blaze got her powers, how she could deepen her relationship with Marine, or if there are any other characters that we've never seen before. And Tails can have two games on the Game Gear, and Knuckles can tune with the Chaotix along with Mighty, and if Shadow can have whatever this shit is, then Blaze at this point in time should have had her own series which can open more opportunities for not only for Blaze but for the characters like Marine. She likes to explore and is too naive. She's also young and has the biggest appetite for adventure. She might give Luffy some competition. And considering that this is an alternate dimension, this calls in question what's alternate in this dimension. The Akenna Trier looks after the Chaos Diamonds and the Master Emerald, mostly to call. So who exactly was this ancient civilization that founded the Power of the Stars? Did some of them travel to a different 
different dimension upon learning of this power? Who are these so-called villainous factions that sought to have the Jewel Scepter for themselves? Do other universes exist in the Sonic Universe? Kind of reminds me of the alternate universes in Dragon Ball Super. So the only reason I can think of as to why anyone would want to have the Scepter is either by sheer curiosity, prosperity of a tribe, or just to go mad with power. And then there are the Sol Emeralds. Though they're basically the Sol Dimension's version of the Chaos Diamonds, they also serve as a connection to the Sol Dimension. If the Sol Emeralds are misplaced, the Soul Dimension will be drawn to wherever the Soul Emeralds are, which would kind of explain how the Terran of Time Space Continuum occurred. The Soul Emeralds were in Sonic's world after all, so in a way, the Jewel Scepter could be the alternate variant of the Master Emerald as the Master Emerald has control of the Chaos Diamonds, while the Jewel Scepter is the host of the power of the stars. I also speculate that the Soul Emeralds could also work in the Scepter's favor should the power go berserk. If the servers of the Master Emerald are the Seven Chaos, then would it be possible for the servers of the Jewel Scepter to be the seven souls and of course you can't have some MacGuffins without a guardian hopefully not like this guy who doesn't give a fuck about doing his job anymore and gets deceived on a daily basis dumb as hell in narrative sense and glitchy as hell in gameplay you just never change do you the soul empire is the family of blades that acts as a more political body of the kingdom so all the political stuff that goes on the empire are the duties of the family the only family member we know is blaze who is a protector of the soul emeralds now i have no clue the soul Emeralds empire would consist of either Blaze's biological family or if these are meant to be in the political sense. I would kind of think of the Soul Empire as a kingdom of the acorns ruled by Princess Sally Acorn. I won't be going over the acorn kingdom because that will require me to tackle the coming portion of the Sonic series and that is a behemoth on its own. But when I think of rulers of Sonic and Blaze's worlds respectively, I immediately think of Sally and Blaze. Both are princesses in their respective houses and strive for the prosperity of their people. The only difference between the two is that Blaze has more battle experience than Sally does. Sally, I would say, is the brains of the Freedom Fighter operation and is the one that just engages in neutral combat. But that's not to say I'm not fond of the idea. I love badass girls who fight. For Blaze, who knows how to put her abilities to use, I would see her as a fighter and one who has a strong sense of duty, as portrayed in her story in Sonic Rush. Personality-wise, she is shown to be rather calm, but also has moments of being annoyed or just upset. But when she learned how to trust others and make friends, she was able to fight for something greater. Her befriending Cream was the best part of her story as we see her smile more often and be more open to others. So with all this in mind, I would think that Marine would be more mature under the tutelage of Blaze, who now knows how to put her trust in people, but Marine would have to be tolerable for something like that. She may be young, but she has the potential to be better in how she was portrayed in Rush Adventure while still maintaining her sense of adventure. The pieces of Blaze in her world are there. Blaze and Marine, the Sol Emeralds, the Jewel Scepter, and the Power of the Stars, and even the Sol Empire. All that remains is what the Sol Dimension is all about outside of the islands that were explored in Rush Adventure. And hopefully it won't be as convoluted as Sonic's world. The South Island, Station Square, the Seven Continents and Unleashed, hell even what's outside of Mobius such as the planets found in Colors. As it is now, the Blaze that we know and care for hasn't had anything since Sonic 06. She's not even playable in Sonic Generation, so that says a lot about the missed opportunities for this character. She's been done dirty in 06 and is only playable in spin-offs. She doesn't even team up with Cream and Sonic Rivals. Can you actually imagine Blaze and Cream side by side in Sonic Rivals? As stupid as the story is in Sonic Rivals, it still would have been a golden opportunity for Blaze to see Cream again and team up with her. Hell, even Cream was done dirty until she became playable again in some mobile game like honestly don't care about. But for a character like Blaze, who has so much potential in terms of characterization in addition to presenting new characters that can benefit in this alternate dimension, it deeply saddens people to see where Blaze is now. She deserves way more than what was given. She needs to be handled by people that know how to give a shit about lore and continuity. She needs to have appearances that aren't spin-offs or god forbid, pointless shit like Sonic Forces. Blaze needs the same love and attention that I'm seeing in indie games nowadays. Blaze needs her own spotlight where she can grow as a character alongside her world. Blaze the Cat needs her own series.